probably hear the phrase food security a lot and we kind of think of that as you know security of, of food supply i think a lot of people do think of it as that um, and ireland you know there's these rankings and ireland is considered the second most food secure country in the world and uh, all this and it's because um you know it's based on the population having access to affordable food and um and that kind of thing supply chains yeah right but exactly but it's actually it what it doesn't consider is our actually ability to as you said um produce what we need for ourselves and um, so it's that we have we have the supply chains we can bring in as much food as we need um but it doesn't really consider the shocks that can happen and you know i suppose how much we're at risk to those external shocks because we really don't produce the food that we need um, and in particular horticulture is an area that we fall down very severely and as you said earlier that we don't produce our own fruit and vegetable supply anywhere near as much as what we need and we even import the things that most irish people probably think we produce lots of like onions and potatoes and so on um, so in that whole, and then, so then the kind of, you know, I suppose the phrase then really that we need to be talking about is food sovereignty, which is much more about us having actual control over our food supply. And um, talk to me a little bit more, I suppose, about the importance of seed and all of that um, and the importance of the, the, the type of seeds that, that you produce. Yes, so the, the whole aspect of food sovereignty really begins with seed sovereignty. So in terms of our ability to actually provide our own seed, as I mentioned, over 95% of our food seed is actually imported. So when there's, when there's any threats to the supply chains, that's when we need to worry because, you know, if most of our food seed is imported in and then there's a problem such as COVID, such as high demand of seed locally, people aren't, our organisations aren't going to be able to send their seed abroad if they need to meet a demand in their own country. So we need to be able to develop a seed production industry as such within Ireland, but rather than, I think industry is always considered as a kind of nasty word that it's going to be all chemically produced seed, it's all going to be genetically modified. But again, with the open pollinated seed, it is true to the parent type. So it means that you can then save that seed, plant it again, grow it. Now you need to actually have sufficient pop populations to ensure the health of the seed because again the more that you grow again and again and again the more that the actual seed viability might not be as good so the wider collection that you have the better which is what we do so we would be growing hundreds of plants you know to ensure that we actually have good quality seed and um, and the thing the whole thing about seed sovereignty is about training people to actually understand why seed is important why seed is the starting point of the food cycle so without seed, without good soil, you don't have a plant from which you can then have a crop. Um, so food sovereignty, there is an element of, yes, we're ranked as number two as the most food secure nation in the world, and we are definitely not. As I mentioned, issues with trade, issues with transport, issues with weather, and um, so many things that affect our ability as an island to be able to be food secure. So with food sovereignty and then seed sovereignty, it's about ensuring that we've all of the facets of the full food cycle covered. So where we can grow and save our seed, where we have healthy soil, where we have healthy crops, where we have supports for growers, both agricultural and horticultural. Most agricultural large scale farmers have been forced to focus just on livestock, whereas many farmers over the years used to also grow their own vegetable supply and make them available. But there's been such a clampdown on farmers being able to actually properly farm. And so you have all of these different schemes that are encouraging farmers to get involved in environmental schemes. And these are things that they would have done over the years. But because they've been pushed and pushed and pushed to focus so much on livestock and dairy, that it's pushed out the focus of the importance of vegetables. Um, and again, with the horticulture, like even during COVID, like all of the allotments were closed, which didn't make any sense because it's the one thing that you can guarantee social distancing. Um, whereas more people would prefer to grow their own food, be able to provide to their local community rather than going into a supermarket where there might be a lot of people. Now, to be fair, most supermarkets, I think, have been adhering very well and have done incredibly well in social distancing and trying to keep everybody safe. But if the ability to grow our own food and to supply food to each other is taken from us, if that monopolization, it's that control that then means that when there's a pressure on the systems, that control then fractures. 
And then it leaves everybody vulnerable because we have taken away the ability for people to be able to feed themselves. So really, we need to be looking at the systems that we have in place, look at the policies that we have in place and what needs to change. Horticulture has very much been highlighted as underfunded, undersupported, but also even in terms of various horticultural courses that have been ended. Uh, there was a master's in horticulture, I think, in UCC that had, had stopped. There's new ones starting up with, I think, an IT Tala, I think it is, um, in collaboration with Airfield, that they're doing a lot of work now with chefs to actually yeah. have a, an, a growing component within that program, which I think is a fantastic thing to do. And there's such a demand for this kind of education that there needs to be on a, on a more governmental level an appreciation of the need to be able to feed ourselves and properly be food secure to ensure that we have true food sovereignty on the island.